He's from Atlanta, Georgia. Very, he is a Hebrew scholar. I don't know how deep he's going to go into that, amen, but we're just going to let the Lord have his way. So we're going to receive him now as he comes to break this word to us. And uh, he's going to do two sessions, and so he'll give us a break in between. And after that, I'll come back and do a recap, you know, and then we will be ready to eat lunch. Dinner, that is. Well, lunch. Yeah, lunch. All right. <laughs> well, let's receive him as he comes. How's everybody doing on today? Yes. You're doing good? Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. So that's beyond good. I'm going to ask you again. Yes. How y'all doing on today? Yes. Bless. Okay, cool, cool. All right, I heard one of my elders say blessed and highly favored. <laughs> right? All right. So um, thank you for having me, Pastor Dixon. Can we get a hand to the Pastor Dixon for putting this men's conference together? I was, I was definitely blessed to hear listen to the speakers and you know, um, doing constructive eavesdropping. <laughs> when you hear brothers talking about something good, you just want to be there just to soak it in. You may not want to participate, but you just want to sit there and get the crumbs. Okay. Um, so on today, um, I had a message that I initially had, and I'm um, excited to change it and realize because it's a men's conference. So I got to speak to the men. Okay. I, I didn't want to make something generic or something general. I didn't want to speak to the men. All right, Pastor, keep me on time. I don't want to get past my time, all right? Um, so I decided, you know what, let me, um, let me speak to the men and uh, give the men a message. Um, so let me go ahead and pull this up here now. I, I, I have to warn you, I need some assistance. So does anybody want to help me with this, this, this message? Anybody? Right, everybody raise your hands at once. All I need you to do is read. Can you read? All right, cool. So who is going to be my reader? Can you grab your... your, your your Bible real quick, we're gonna go into a couple of things. All right, just give me one second. sermon is called Genesis 127 Never Forget. And the subtopic is I think I forgot my keys. Hold on. Oh, there you go. All right, got it. All right. But that is the subtopic. I think I lost my keys. Okay. Y'all gonna get it as we move through. They're like, what is he talking about? <laughs> All right, so let's, let's, let's begin. How many of y'all ever heard of that phrase, never forget? Raise your hand. That should be everybody in here, right? You ever seen those uh, advertisements that say 9-11, never forget? Right. Yes. yes, so somebody tell me, what, what is the never forget? What is, what is that about? Somebody tell me briefly, anybody? Anybody? Never forget what happened at 9-11. <laughs> there, there, there you go, 9-11. So um, I'm going to go ahead and read this for you real quick, just for those of you who may not be familiar with that slogan um, that is tied to that specific date that is living in for me, okay? Um, Never forget is an expression and political slogan used to urge others to remember events surrounding a national tragedy, most notably the September 11, 2001 attacks. According to an article published by New York Magazine, the expression was first used in relation to the Holocaust during World War II. Never forget, long ago entered the lexicon in relation to the Holocaust. It has now been reassigned to 9-11, where it is likely to remain. It has become a mantra and a marketing tool for politicians and merchandise alike. Following the suicide plan attacks against the United States on September 11, 2001, the slogan was used to commemorate those who lost their lives. It also became associated with the United States militarism after being adopted by those who supported the subsequent war on terror. Now that is just a summary in regards to what's encapsulated into that phrase, never forget. Mm. Now, how many of y'all were alive during 2001 when 9-11 situation happened? <laughs> okay. Um, where were some of y'all at? Columbus, Ohio. I was at school. 
Columbus. College. What'd you say? Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. Anybody else? Work. He was at work. <laughs> now, let me tell you an interesting story real quick before I get into this. When that happened, I had a job interview about two blocks away from 9-11. Wow. Oh, but let me tell you how awesome the most high is, right? I overslept that day. Wow. Ooh. I forgot to set my alarm. Wow, look at God. <laughs> that means I was supposed to be there 15 minutes before the planes hit. Wow. At a job interview. Wow. That's incredible. So when somebody says, never forget, <laughs> I'm not just saying never forget from somebody being distant somewhere on the side of the country. I never forgot because of how Yah placed his hand on me and allowed me to sleep a little while longer uh -huh. so that I missed the tragedy. That's right. Because when I woke up, I turned the TV on and I was like, oh, wow, this is a great movie. I think I'm going to see it. I thought it was a movie because it was, it was, to me, it was just something that was unreal, surreal. So I thought it was a movie, and then I kept changing the channels. I'm like, wait, hold on, they advertising this on every channel. My friend called me, he was supposed to meet me. He also missed it because he was waiting for me. So, so sometimes when God has his hand on you, it may not just be for you, it can be for somebody else. So his life was spared simply because I overslept. And before that time, I didn't have a relationship with the Most High. Okay. Some of you have had situations like that in your life that you can attest to. That if he didn't delay you a little while longer, you wouldn't be here. Okay. All right, you want to talk about mercy? Okay. Let's get into it. All right, so um, the reason why I brought this up is because um, one thing that um, this, the great Pastor Dixon uh, had reached out to me for is in regards to uh, the Hebrew language or Hebrew culture. That's something that I like to delve into. Um, so the question is, if, if we're saying that the sermon is never forget, scripture is, what scripture did I say it was? Genesis, Genesis 127, never forget. So what does Genesis 127 have to do with the slogan, never forget, when we're talking about men? I thought I lost my keys, but I found them, they're right there, I'm going to keep my keys there, alright, so I don't lose them again. See, because I put it somewhere where I know it's at. Because I lost it because I didn't know where I put it. Mm. Okay. Y'all going to get it. We, we, we get in here. You're going to get it. All right? So what can learning a Hebrew word, or even words plural, teach us about being a man? We must first learn an important attribute about being a male before successfully transitioning to manhood. Yes, sir. See, a lot of people think that a male is based on your gender, which relates to your genitalia, which makes you distinct from the opposite sex. Right? That's what science would tell you. That's what most laymen would tell you, right? But did you know that the scriptures give us a much more deeper meaning to what a male is? Okay. So let's walk through the scriptures a little bit and find out what that is. Somebody get me in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. In Hebrew, the word for Genesis is better sheet. All right? Genesis 126. So now, the brother is going to read it. Before you read it, I'm going to read it in Hebrew. And then I'm going to let the brother read it in English. He's going he's to be my translator. He didn't even realize he was going to be a translator today. <laughs> he's going to translate for me today. All right? So let me bring up my, my Tanakh, which is just the Old Testament that's written in Hebrew. And I'm going to read it first, and then I'm going to let the brother expound. But in this case, I'm not going to read everything. I'm just going to read a small portion. I'm going to translate everything else. All right? So in the Hebrew it reads, Why Yomer Elohim, Ne, excuse me, Na Ase Adam, Be Salmenu, Kid Mutenu, Why Yidu, Bigat Chayam, Ubeof, Hashamayim, Ubab, Bechame, Ubekal, Ha Ares, Ubekal, Ha Remesh, Ha Romesh, Al Ha Aresh. So I said I was going to read it all, but I didn't. <laughs> but I'm going to let my translator translate. Read Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, mm -hmm. after our likeness, mm -hmm. and let them have dominion. Wait, slow down. Let them have what? Dominion. Let them have some of the cake. <laughs> all the a little bit of the steak and the profit. Let them have weak rule. Mm. Weak rule. Mm. No, not weak. Well, read it, brother. It says what? 
Dominion. Dominion. Okay, keep going. Over the fish, over the fish. of the sea. Uh -huh. And over the fowl of the air. Uh -huh. And over the cattle. And over all the earth. And over every creeping thing uh -huh. that creepeth upon the earth. That creepeth upon the earth. So what's the key word that I honed in on there? And it's interesting because the brother brought it up. I don't know if y'all paid attention. You mentioned the word dominion. Did y'all catch that? I'm out for two or three witnesses. That's what the scriptures say, right? Okay, I just want to make sure. All right. So what word did I hone in on there? Dominion. Dominion. Okay. So when we see here in the Hebrew, as it's read, I said, way year do. Now there's a root word for that word dominion. And in the Hebrew, that word is radar. Radar means to rule, have dominion, dominate, tread down. And then in Hebrew, you have various verb stems, all right? But ultimately, it means to subjugate something, to cause, to dominate, to scrape out. Did y'all know it also meant to scrape something out? Hopefully, you're following. So we see in the beginning that God created who? Man. The word there for man is all inclusive of both genders. Follow me. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. So if it's inclusive of both genders, then how are you saying this is specific about the male? Well, let's go on to the next scripture. I'm going to let me read it real quick in Hebrew, and then I'm going to let the brother translate. All right? So in Hebrew, Genesis 127 is, Why Yibra Elohim et Ha'adam Besalmo Beselem Elohim bara oto zakar une kheba bara otam. So I'm going to stop on an important part right there. We're going to elaborate a little bit more. We're going to move further. But go ahead and translate for me. I'm sorry, brother. What's your name? Nathaniel. Na Nathaniel? I'm Ron. You got a biblical name too, so I got the right man for the job. All right, let's go. <laughs> so God created man. So God created man, uh huh. In his own image. Uh huh. In the image of God, created he him. Created he him. I slow down. Ain't everybody preaches on this, right? You've heard that a lot. Heard a lot of sermons on that, but keep going. Male and female uh -huh. created he them. Male and female created he who? Damn. But then when we read earlier, it says that what? Read the first line. God created he. He him. created who? He him. No, no, read the first line, oh, first part of it. Uh huh. So God created man. He created man. In his own. Now, wait. Now, the word for man there is Adam. So, Adam is not just relating to a particular person, but it's related to mankind in general. This is interesting. <laughs> that's, why, that's why when we see later on, they're also called Adam, even when Eve is here. Because when we look at marriage, when a woman joins a man, she takes on his what? His last name. So they're one. Amen. Okay. For the men out there, if you marry, your wife has to reflect you. Yes, come on. You have to reflect your wife. If I'm not somewhere my wife is there, I have to have full confidence that she's representing me. Yes. She has to have full confidence that I'm representing her. Because when people see her, they see me. When they see me, they see her. When they see us, they see one. They see God. But you said he created who? Male and what? Female. Female. Let me ask you a question. How many of y'all actually went and researched to see what that word was for male? Raise your hand. This is deep. This is really deep. Oh, you did? Okay, so, so I, I'm not gonna let him spoil it, but I'm glad Pastor Dixon's on the same page, but we all gonna get there soon. Cause we all on the same bus, we're on the same destination. So that word for male is zakar in Hebrew. You're going to say, what you mean, zakar? What does that mean? I don't know what that is. Make it plain. People tell me all the time, make it plain, right? Yes, sir. So that word zakar, if we go back to the verb zakar, it means to remember. Mm. Mm. It's deep. Let me say it again. The word used for male here is the word zakar, and zakar means to remember and the verb stem. If you turn it into a noun, it means a memorial of something. He who remembers. 
Well, he who remembered, depending upon what the tense is. So why would the scriptures have an account of the male part or male agenda being called Zakar? That's deep. The woman is called Nikabah. It's something different. That typically just means the female gender. But for the male, it's specific. So I said, Yah, why would you why would you lay this down like this? So I went ahead and looked up the word memorial, and the definition for the word memorial is something, especially a structure established to remind people of a person or an event. So that why Yah made the male? Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 29 says, truly this only I have found that God made man upright but they have sought out many schemes. Is that the right one we read it? You read it in the same Bible? Ecclesiastes 7 29? Oh, 29. Okay, no problem. So the scripture says that the most high made man upright. He made him righteous. He made him a pillar he made him a foundational structure to remember things. Okay. See, we don't see that attribute given to the female. We see it given to the male. By the time I get through this, you're going to say, well, how come the woman remembers a little bit more than I do? <laughs> I know some of y'all can attest to that. <laughs> yes? Oh, okay. We're going to get into that, right? So when we see that, we see that the Most High had made man to remember. But remember what? So Genesis 128, when we go ahead and read it, we see that Genesis 128 has another word in it that's very peculiar. It's called subdue. So not only did he give him dominion, but he also gave him an instruction to subdue that which is under your feet. So it's not enough alone to be identified as a male that you have dominion, but are you demonstrating, subduing things that are under your domain? Okay. Get Genesis chapter 6, verse 18. So when we see the subduing instruction, now the most high blessed man, be fruitful, be multiplied, fill the earth, have dominion, and subdue it. So that was an unspoken con, an unwritten contract. Right? The text doesn't say it was a covenant at that point, but we like to attribute it as well. When we get Genesis chapter 6, verse 18. It's more specific. It's an attestation of a covenant. Read that for me, please. But with thee will I establish my With covenant. you, this has to do with Noah or Noah. And thou shalt come into the ark. He said, I will establish what with you? A what? A what? A what? Did he have a female there or a male? Male. He had a male. Male. Uh huh. Okay. So if we keep reading, go to Genesis chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. So he says, I'm going to make my covenant with you. And this has to do with the ark. So now we have a situation where a man or a male, the Most High speaks to him. And we're going to learn how do you transition from that male state to that manhood state. Read it. What is it? Okay. And I will establish my covenant. I will establish my what? Covenant. Uh-huh. With you, uh -huh. neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Okay, keep going. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the token. Wait, he said this is the what? The token. The token, keep going. Of the covenant. Of the covenant, keep going. Which I make between me uh -huh. and you. And you. And wait, wait, he's talking to the woman. He's talking to a female. He's talking to a little girl. Okay, keep going. Uh, let's see. You almost done. Mm -hmm. Every living creature. And every so the man first, and then what? Every living. Creature. Wait, why did he start with the male first? Are you following the scripture we just read earlier? Because what? He has dominion. Woo. Okay, hopefully y'all riding with me. We getting there. All right, keep going. Uh, and every living creature uh -huh. that is with you. That is with you. Uh huh. For perpetual generation. Wait, for what? Perpetual. For what? Perpetual. What's perpetual mean? Uh, 
You can't read it and not explain it. You gotta read. What? Continual covenant. And this is when we know that the bow was placed in the sky. So you're telling me that Yah needs to remember something? No. That's interesting. But could it be there so that way he can remind the male why he was created? We, we, we get in there. So I'm going to tell you how awesome Yah is. Yah is so awesome that he has never forgot any of his covenants. Amen. None of his promises. Amen. So if any of y'all had any promises for the most high, he will fulfill it. That's right. Yeah. The problem may be you. Amen. What are you forgetting? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Let me not get ahead of myself. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 8 and 1. So we're going to see that the Most High, when he gives dominion, he has to bring him to the covenant so that way you can get that dominion. Okay? Some people don't have dominion over their household. Mm. Some people don't have dominion over their finances. <coughs> Some people don't have dominion on their job. Mm. Of themselves. All right, keep going. Read that. Genesis 8 and 1. And God remembered. And who? And God remembered. He what? Remembered. He what? Remembered. He remembered. He remembered who? Noah. Ah. Slow down. So God remembered Noah. Did he forget? No. But he remembered Noah. So why won't he remember you? Oh. Some of y'all, they think the most high is abandoning you. That God has his forsook you. Give me Genesis chapter 19, verse 29. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. When God destroyed uh -huh. the cities of the plain. Uh -huh. That God remembered. Wait, that he what? Remembered. Who, who remembered? God. Remember what? Abraham. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> so he remembered Abraham too and he gave a covenant to Abraham now remember when he spoke um, well first of all when he dealt with Noah after the flood he told Noah and his sons do what? be fruitful and multiply Amen. so when the covenant was given then the domain was given and Noah was obedient, therefore, after the flood, he was the one or the proponent to fulfill the earth. Mm. So you see, they work hand in hand. Okay? And you read Genesis 19 and 29. So Abraham had covenanted with the Most High. Now, again, another word that comes up. Give me Genesis chapter 17, verse 9. What does that say? And God said unto Abraham. What did he say to him? Thou shalt keep my covenant. You shall keep my what? Covenant. My covenant. Go ahead. Therefore. Therefore. Thou. Uh huh. And thy seed. And your seed. After thee. Uh huh. In their generation. Okay. Keep going. This is my covenant. This is my covenant. Which ye shall keep. Which you shall keep. Between me and uh, you. Uh huh. And thy seed. Uh huh. After thee. Uh huh. Every man uh -huh. and child uh -huh. among you shall be circumcised. Keep going. And ye shall circumcise the flesh mm -hmm. of your foreskin, and it shall be a Wait, it shall be a what? A token. A what? A token. A what? A token. A token. That's a very, very interesting word. As we saw it previously, before circumcision even came into the picture. You have to have something to remind you because men forget. When you disobey, you'll forget a lot more than when you obey. Some of y'all get that at midnight. It's going to get somebody. So now he saw that now a covenant was given to Abraham. He said, I'm going to show you a token to remind you. And then he said to Abraham that this land I'm going to give to your seed if you're obedient. Are you listening? Yes, sir. So we see the domain, dominion area. He's willing to give the dominion. If we covenant with him and keep our part of the bargain because we see that Yah remembers. Oh. He ain't forget. Are you forgetting? What are you forgetting? I almost got my keys. They're right there. Okay. So we're moving forward. How much time I got, Pastor, on this first session? Because we're almost halfway there. Five minutes. Five minutes? All right. Let me, let me wrap this up and then we're going to pick up the next half. All right. 
So when we go to Exodus 20, uh, chapter 2, verse 24, and Exodus 6 and 5, we see something else. Go to Exodus chapter 2, 24, please, my brother. So this is how great Yah is. Not only will he remember you, if you have a personal relationship with him, but he will also remember your... Who else is he going to remember? Your what? Your offspring. Read that. And God looked upon the children of Israel, uh -huh. and God had respect unto them. He had respect unto them, uh-huh. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro. Now slow down here. So now we see he looked upon the children of Israel, mm -hmm. and then we see the name Moses mentioned. Give me six and five. And I have also heard the groaning. Wait, I've also heard the what? The groaning. The what? The groaning. The groaning of the children of the children of Israel. Uh huh. Whom the Egyptians kept in bondage. Wait, who they kept them free? No, nope, in bondage. They let them roam around do what they wanted to. Okay. They had full control of everything. Bondage. bondage. So a lot of us are bound right now. Yes. A lot of us don't know the right words to say to God to get him to release us from those chains. But there is something that is given to you as a token to remind you on how to get that breakthrough. I heard that word earlier. I think I'm going to say it. Let me finish this last one right here. Let's get Judges chapter 3, verse 7, verse 8 and 34. So once the Most High made a covenant with Moses, excuse me, with Moses, after hearing the groans of the children of Israel, he did what? You know, he did the plagues, he released them out of Israel, which means in Egypt, and the text said they wandered for 40 years, but finally they made it in. Yes, they got there. But before they could get there, they had to make another pact. Joshua said, listen, hey, before you is life or death. For me and my household, we choose who? And y'all can choose whoever you want. But this is who we're going to serve. That's right, that's right. So the ones who were obedient and the ones who made that pact, they entered into the land. And they got a land flowing with milk and honey. They got everything. They didn't have the need. They didn't have the want. But guess what? God left some things there to test them. Okay. Sometimes you get a blessing and you wonder why, why is everybody trying to take my blessing from you? You get a blessing, you wonder why, well, how come every time when I get this blessing, my pockets get a little low? You get a blessing, you wonder why my children acting up when we just got A, B, and C? You tend to think that they're the problem. But you're not realizing it's a test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What good is it for me to give you something if you don't show me appreciation in the process of not only receiving it, but in the midst of having it, you know that I give it to you because it's a unique relationship that I have with you. Yes, come on. But sometimes people are not even worried about that. They're so worried about the things around them that they don't even appreciate the reward. But let me get Judges chapter 8, and then we're going to table off, and then I'm going to finish on strong when we do the second half, but I had to build you up to it. So the children of Israel got into the land and got complacent. Some of us have gotten complacent in our lives today. Because we've gotten the things that God said he was going to give us, right? Amen. God was going to give us this, and we got it. So now we feel like I'm at the pinnacle of my blessings. Mm. When you don't realize that the material possessions is only the byproduct of the relationship. Yes. It's the benefits. Amen. How many of you only go to work just to get benefits and no pay? Raise your hand. <laughs> you can see. Right. I don't see them my hands up. None of you go to work just for the benefits with no pay? So then how come when we go and we struggle and labor hard in the field of Yah? But yet, we are only there for the benefits, and we're not there for the real pay. Right. Your soul is the prized possession, Amen, that's right. not the things of the world. That's right. yeah. Read that last scripture, and we're going to take off. We'll, we'll close out strongly. Oh, chapter 8 of the world. So that's... Yep, yeah, Judges chapter 8, and uh, well, 8 and verse 34. And the children of Israel remembered not... Wait! The children of Israel, what? Remembered not. They remembered not 
But yet, you have all these males who are created for the purpose to. But they remember not. Keep going. Uh, the Lord their God, who had delivered them. Out Wait, who had did what? Delivered them. Uh huh. Keep going. Out of the hands of all their enemies. Uh huh. On every side. Mm hmm. So they went into the land and they remember not. They forgot. So how do they expect for the Most High to come into the picture and remember them when they forgot him? Amen. <laughs> Think about that. And the last thing I'm going to leave off with so we can, we can uh, get, have a little break is, but you know who remembered the males? The Hebrew women. Y'all missed that. When you go back to the story, you see that when Pharaoh saw that he was multiplying, didn't understand why he was multiplying because that was a benefit for Abraham keeping a covenant that I will multiply your seed as the sands of the sea and the stars in the sky. And when Pharaoh said, man, they multiplying too heavy, they're going to join with our enemies and they're going to destroy us. So every male child Come that comes out of that womb is a reminder to us how great these people are. They got to die. The women said, no, we're not going to let that happen. The women. The women understood the covenant that the Most High had with the male child so they could not let them die. Some of y'all get that later. Amen. But we're going to pause over here. We're going to finish the rest of it strong. Yes. Amen. Woo. Awesome. Awesome. Let's go into some labor. Okay, okay. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. So, um, the brother read Judges chapter 8. And in Judges chapter 8, we saw that the children of Israel had forgot. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, Psalm 106 and 21. Because God is not going to give you no dominion without any challenges. Let me say that again. He's not going to give you no dominion without any challenges. Because how do you know you could subdue something unless there's a challenge in front of you? That's right. Come on. That's right. That's Can't right. subdue passive ground. Right. How many of y'all have ever tilled the ground before, done agriculture, or garden, or anything like that? Yeah. Now you can wait for some passive crops. You can wait for them, or you can create your own. We also call horticulture. That's a way that you can actually create gardens and so forth. A lot of those are done through high elevation, etc. But when you put your hand to the plow, you're more likely to receive a greater yield than if you allow the land to passively produce food for you. Yes, so those who, who sow to the ground and do the thing. Okay, just wanna make sure. All right, read that for me, my brother. Okay. They forget. Wait, Psalm 106, 21. The psalmist says that who? They forget. Who did they forget? God. Uh-huh. Their Savior. Whoa. Uh-huh. And wait, wait. Who? God, their Savior. Keep the Savior thing up. We're going to get to it when we get to, when we get to the New Testament. Keep going. All right. Which had done great things. Wait, which had done small things. Great. Simple things. Great. Only some things. All things. Great things. How do you forget somebody who's done great things in your life? <laughs> some of us may have some people in our life that are like that. Some of us may be those people in other people's lives that are like that. Somebody <laughs> do something really good for you. And you forget. Mm. How does that make you feel? Mm. Somebody's in a dire situation. They need some money. And you loan them the last thousand dollars you got in your bank. They take that and say thank you. you never hear from them again. Wow. They come back to the street. They don't even remember that they borrowed anything from you. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? Right? So he did wondrous things for them, but yet they still forgot. And they saw the Most High firsthand. Amen. A lot of us only seen or experienced him secondhand. They saw him firsthand. Amen. But there was a problem. The scripture says that Moses knew the ways, <laughs> but the children of Israel knew the acts. Too many of us are looking for his acts and don't know the way. I'm going to say it again. Too many of us are looking for the acts so much so that we forget the way. Right. Okay, I'm speaking to somebody here. Yeah. Somebody's going to get it. 
So now we have a situation where they forgot. So guess what? They cried and they groaned. And he said, deliver us to redeem them. And every time they were redeemed, they would go back and do the same thing all over again. And does any of y'all have children in here? I got children. How many times your children do something wrong and you have to punish them? And they do it again. You punish them, you feel bad, you're like, I'm gonna give you some ice cream or something like that. You just feel bad, right? And they do the same thing again. You punish them, they do the same thing again. And you punish them. Now the punishment, punishing your child is never anything good, right? But it's something that's necessary for growth. Amen. Amen. But in a situation where they keep forgetting, you lose something in the process. So forgetting is not only going to affect you, it's going to affect everything connected to you. You start to lose your dominion. Okay. Somebody get that. So you may say, okay, well, the children of Israel kept forgetting, kept forgetting. As a consequence, they got spewed out the land. That's what the text says. Spew, spit out the land. And now they're in captivity. And now, for some strange, odd reason, there's a beckoning call for them to come back. So you may say, well, why is Yah so patient with these hard-headed, stiff-necked peoples? That when Moses gave them the law, he didn't just give them the law, he said something very peculiar. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 16. Because you would think just getting the law was enough. No, 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 no. No, no, it's not enough. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 16. What does it say, my brother? Circumcise. Circumcise. Therefore. Therefore. The foreskin. Of what? Of your heart. No, of your private parts. Of your heart. You sure it says that there? Yes, sir. Circumcise the foreskin of your heart. So how come when people read the Torah or the Old Testament, when we get through the statute of laws and commandments, they always, they miss that part there. What good is having all of that if your heart is not circumcised? Mm -hmm. When something is circumcised, you are tearing off foreskin and you are revealing something that is vulnerable to an environment that can be hostile. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter um, 30, verse 6. What is the purpose of the circumcision of your heart? Because the text says, and be ye stiff-necked no more. See, when your heart is circumcised, you're no longer stiff necked. Do you know why? Because you realize it's not you that's going to get it through. It had nothing to do with you. But what? And the Lord thy God will circumcise. He will what? Circumcise. So he will circumcise. That means you got to allow the process to happen. And keep going. And the heart. And the heart. Of thy seed. Uh huh. To love the To Lord. what? To, love. to what? To, love. to what? To, love. to love. So the circumcising of the heart is an act of what? Of love. That vulnerable part of you, the inside of you that you want nobody else to see or touch or to hear from. Yah says, expose it to me because in my love there's comfort and my love there's protection and my love there's consolement. When you expose this thing to me and you bring it to me, I will protect you. I will comfort you. Okay. But remember, initially, the physical was a token. But the real goal is a circumcision of the heart. So the question is, after doing all of this, shot, you told them, keep my statute of commandments, circumcise the foreskin of your heart. I'm going to reward you, which he kept his promise. And also it says that the reason why he kept some of those people in the land that they could not defeat is to teach them how to war. Because without struggles and situations and challenges, That's right. you're not going to know how to fight. That's right. That's right. How effective it is if you get trained in a gym and you never have no sparring opponent. <laughs> and then the day comes, you got to go fight somebody. You shadow boxing the whole time. You got to go fight somebody. Right. How effective you think you're going to be? That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> think about that. So what God does is he gives us sparring sessions. The sparring session is not designed to beat you. The sparring session is not to overcome you. It is to train you how to fight on, your man. real enemy. Amen. Ooh, Amen. But we get so mad at God for bringing the challenge Come on. that we don't realize that the victory is in the process, not the prize. Somebody's going to get that. Somebody's going to get that. But you got a question and say, God, you have so much patience. Why do you even care about this forgetful man that is disobedient to you? Read Psalm chapter 8. 
Verse 4. We, we said this word earlier. Two important words we, we pulled out. What is Psalm chapter 8? A lot of us are familiar with this. But are you connecting the dots? What does it say? What is man that thou art mindful of? Him? Hold on. What is man that thou art what? Art mindful. That word mindful in the Hebrew is the same word, zakar. What is man that you remember him? Why are you remembering man? Keep going. And the son of man uh -huh. that thou visited That you visited him. Keep going. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angel. So his status in regards to power and authority is minuscule compared to the angels. But keep going. And has crowned him. Wait, but yet you crown him. Wait, he forgets. He's stiffening. He messes up. But you did what? You crowned him. And what else? And uh, with glory and honor. With glory and honor. Keep going. Thou madest him to have dominion. Wait, you made him what? To have dominion. So wait, this is the psalmist speaking back to the creator. What is man that you even remember him? But then he realized it's because you gave him dominion. Now, when a man succeeds his dominion, another entity takes over. Mm. See, the purpose of man being created, several reasons we go in theologically, but simply put was to have dominion over the works of the hand of Yah. That's incredible. Uh, who's the brother right here? You said that you, you build houses, right? You work on houses. So imagine if you built a house, a five, six room mansion. You just built the house and it's elaborate, it looks nice. And you give it to somebody, let's say your son, to take over it. And let's say your son never built a home in his life. Let's say he don't care nothing about real estate. Do you think that he will treat that the same way that you would treat it? No, he wouldn't. His hands didn't put it together, but yet you made him the overseer because you trusted him. That's your son. So the most responsible thing to do to show honor to his father is to take care of things which was given to him as an inheritance. Amen. But what happens is we tend to lose our inheritance because once we get a portion of it, like we see with the prodigal son, what do we do? We squander it all. Because we feel entitled to something that we didn't work for Amen. simply because of the environment which we grew up in. Amen. That's why no matter how much money I get, my children will always have to work for something. Amen. That's right. That's I right. think somebody missed me. That's what somebody got children out there. That's what somebody got children out there. So we see that he remembers man because he said, I have given this creature dominion over the works of my hands Amen. and everything else that I created that he has this dominion. So I can't just let him go. This is why he keeps remembering man. This is why he keeps covenant with man. Are you following me? Yes. But man, he doesn't have the ability to remember all the time. It's interesting. So what did Yah do? He said, you know what? Because man forgets, I got to give him another token. We almost there at the keys. So man forgets, but he needs another token. We see, he kept giving token after token. Give him the rainbow, so I'm not going to do A, B, and C, give him the flood. So I'm going to give you circumcision so you can remember. He's giving you tokens to remember because man is so forgetful. And that's why he was created to remember. It's not the woman's job to remember the covenant or the promises or the stuff that you made with the most high for your household. It's your responsibility, oh man. Amen. That's why you're the male. You're the rememberer. Wow. Okay. Some of y'all get that. So he says, I'm going to give them a token because if I don't give them this token, guess what? They're going to forget again. Okay. So we see even in the Tanakh, which is the Old Testament, the token is promised in Ezekiel chapter 11, 19. You don't have to read it. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26. You go back and read it. Where he says, listen, I got to take out your stony heart and give you a heart of flesh. I have to sprinkle water on you so you can be cleansed. And I got to give you my what? Ruach. Or your pneuma in the Greek, which means the spirit. Because man can't do it on his own. Amen. He needs a token to remind him. Yes. Because if he doesn't have that token to remind him, he's going to forget. That's right. And then he's going to forfeit his property, yes. which is anything that God has placed under his feet to walk and tread. Mm -hmm. You're going to give up your citizenship. Wow. People are missing that. So the question is, where did this token of this promise come into fruition? 
But we see that is a very important person in the New Testament who was entrusted to be the one to bring this token to all of us here. You know the story, right? But in their reign, we have the Israelites, or at that time the Yahudim, so we say the Jews, who are now in the land of captivity, which means they are no longer sovereign in their land. So how does that translate us today? Well, some of us are not landowners, physically. But you do own a lot of other things that are in your domain. But let's get Luke chapter 10. And let's see what some of these things are. Keys are still here. Read that for me. Or anybody that gets it, if the brother don't get it first. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you. Wait, behold, I give unto you. Power. Wait, what? Power. Dunamis in the Greek. I give you the power. enabling power. Uh huh. To tread over serpents. To tread over what? Serpents. That don't belong in your domain and in your path. Keep going. And scorpions. And scorpions. Keep going. And over all. The and over some. The Wait, all, some, all, some, all, part, all, a little bit. All. 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 Keep going. A power of the enemy. And nothing wait, wait, wait. And something can. And nothing. A few things can. And nothing. Are you sure about that? Nothing. Okay, keep going. It shall be any means hurt by any means hurt you. But yeah, we're getting hurt left and right by things. He gave them a commission in Luke chapter 10. What was that commission? To bring that what? No, but what was the commission he gave them? Luke chapter 10. Those of you who are familiar. He sent them to go and give the gospel of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. To give it out. Yeah. Remember, he had 70 first, and then he got the 10 disciples. He's sending them out to go preach the gospel of the kingdom because wherever they tread their feet, that's their domain. Amen. Mm -hmm. And anything that is not of Yah cannot be in that domain. Mm -hmm. Because now they have power over it. Enabling power, which means that enabling power means you don't have to possess it on your own. Something or somebody has to give it to you. A lot of us here are still getting bit by scorpions. Still getting bit by snakes. What are they doing in your domain? Why are you not still doing it? Are you forgetting something? Are you forgetting something? So now we have a situation where he says, I've given you these things, but not only that, there's something else I want to give you. Give me John chapter 14. So in this realm, the terrestrial realm, I want to give you something awesome, which I'm going to give you the power to tread over all of these creeping things that are in your path, and nothing by no means shall harm you. That doesn't mean it won't attack you. The people forget about that. You're going to get the attack. We always say the weapon is formed. Yeah, you're going to get the attack, but will it harm you? Yeah. That's different. Our perception of danger is what causes fear. But when you entrust in God, and the scripture says, when you hide yourself in his shadow, Amen. so that way the things on the outside cannot afflict you, therefore you will find power in the shadow. That's interesting. Read that. John chapter 14, verse 2. In my father's house. In whose house? Father. In my father's house. What? Are many mansions. Are many mansions. Keep going. If it were not so. If it were not so. I would have told you. Uh huh. I go to prepare. Wait. I go so I could do what? To prepare. To do what? To prepare. Prepare what? A place. A place where? In that mansion. So he's going to prepare a place for you in that mansion. But how do you get access to that mansion? You gotta remember him. But it's something else. It's something else. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 9. Verse 19. So before they can get this kingdom that's to come and access to a room in the mansion so they can dwell with the Most High, not only has he given them power over scorpions, and snakes, and let me just say this to you, this is all figurative. I don't want nobody going out there getting bit by a snake or somebody scorpion and said, brother, you told me in your message <laughs> that these things were not my harm. <laughs> I'll make sure I make that clear. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what did he say to the men or the males that were following him? He said, I'm going to give you something. Oh, wait. Somebody said it already. If anybody got it, you can read it. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. What he said? And I will give him to thee the keys. Wait, wait. I'm going to give you the what? Keys. The what? Keys. The keys. Of, the of what kingdom? Of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. Whatsoever thou shalt bind. Whatever you bind shall what? Uh-huh. Shall be bound in heaven. Keep going. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth. Uh-huh. Shall be loose in Slow down. The key is only a token of something. The key is not the thing. The key represents the thing. So just because you are giving keys don't mean you get an access. Oh, wait, hold on. We're going we to keep going. Because some people get the keys. You get the spiritual gifts and you're in here doing all types of stuff, but you ain't got no access. Because now you got situations going on. You can't subdue it. You ain't got control and power over your domain. And that's why you was created, old man. Don't forget. So he says, I'm giving you the keys because these keys are not only going to give you access to things in the terrestrial realm, but when the new Jerusalem comes for those rooms that I'm making for you in that mansion, you also get access. But guess what? You need the token. So what is the token that's going to let me know that I'm getting access to that mansion? What is the token that's going to let me know that when I have scorpions and snakes and so forth in my life, that is fighting against and I'm having issues with. What is that token to remind me that I will always have control and power and authority once I yield and submit to the covenant that God has made to redeem my soul, which the scripture says, it is precious. A man cannot redeem another man's soul. But there's a particular situation where we're given an exception. But I'm not here to touch on that because the brother already touched on salvation. I want to give you a byproduct of that salvation. And in the theological circles, they call it the soteriology. Soter means salvation, to be saved in the Greek. So remind me. You remind me. Because sometimes you got to speak to somebody else to remind you. Sometimes you can look in the mirror and remind yourself. Sometimes, like what my wife does, you get words of affirmation. You got to put it around places Amen. to remind you Amen. of certain things. But man, you're responsible for remembering that covenant because you are the priest of your household, which I heard earlier as well. But let's get John chapter 14 and verse 26. For those of us who are obedient, because when you're no longer stiff-necked, your heart is circumcised, it is open. The vulnerable part of you is exposed to the love of the Most High. And He can work with you because you realize that your ways are not His ways. Your thoughts are not His thoughts. And when you yield to Him and you are obedient, now you can begin to have the enabling power to subdue anything that is in your domain that does not have the jurisdiction in your realm. See, when you are not remembering the covenant, you are yielding jurisdiction of your domain to another entity. You're giving something in somebody else illegal possession. When you have the keys, you have the right of possession. But when you look at the lease, the lease says that anybody that is not on that lease is a visitor. But if they stay for too long, they become an illegal occupant that is not belong in that realm. So some of us here, I don't know, may have a family member or friend, but just because you gave them keys and they got a little bit of access, they think that's their home. <laughs> think about that. Some of us have been given the keys. Like I told you, you may even be given access, but you realize you still don't own anything because you're not working for it. <clears throat> Read that. But the comforter. Wait, but the who? Comforter. Parakletos in the Greek. Para means close. Kletos means the elected. The one elected to be close to you. Keep going. Which is the Holy Ghost. Which is what? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Whom the Father. Whom the Father. Will send in my will name. Will send in my name. Keep going. He shall teach you. He shall teach you what? All things. Wait. He shall teach you some things. All things. All things. Uh-huh. And bring all things. Wait, wait. He's going to teach you and do what? Bring and do what? Bring. bring all things where? To your remembrance. To your remembrance. Mm -hmm. Full circle. I don't know if you're following me on this. Come on now. Yeah. Come on, let's take it home. 
So now today, we have a token of the covenant that at this time was done by who we say in the Hebrew, Yahusha ben Yosef, or Yahusha Hamashiach, which we say is Jesus Christ. He had initiated a process for us to enter into so we can be back in right alignment with the Most High, His Father. He has prepared rooms for us in the mansion. He said, listen, I wouldn't do it or say it if it wasn't so. But I know, man, that you're forgetful. I know you're not going to even remember day by day that I got something up there waiting for you. And not only that, that I'm giving you a token of what's to come by allowing you temporal things. Mm -hmm. When the disciples went out, they were commissioned to heal the sick, right? right. Cleanse the lepers, right? They had power over sickness and disease and all types of stuff. Well, why did they have the ability to do that? Because the message has nothing to do with healing. That's a byproduct of the message. That's why when you read the scriptures, you see that when Jesus went around healing everybody, after a while, he just stopped because of unbelief. Then he transitioned to teaching mode and said, listen, they're not going to believe me doing the works anymore. Let me just talk about the message. But why do you think that's the case? I'm going to ask you, my brother, since you read it. Why do you think that's the case? Um, because we have to remember who he is and that he gives us um, the power. That he's the source. Yes. Right? Yes. We can dig the well, but we gotta wait for the rain day. <laughs> right? We don't control the rain. <laughs> Just like we may not control the famine. That's why you gotta dig deep. Yes. And the purpose of the well is a reservoir of something good that happened prior. See, sometimes we're not digging into the reservoir of our memories to see what God did for us in the past. Come on now. So sometimes when we face something in the future, we think he's handicapped. He said, man, is my hand too short that it cannot save? Is my hand too short that it cannot save? No, it's not that my hand is too short. It's that your sin has separated me from you. When you confess it and yield it up to me, I can remove that stumbling block and give you the enabling power to subdue. But you got to have that token. And you said the token was what? The Holy Spirit. But some people right now today may be Holy Spirit filled, but sometimes you feel, you know what? I don't have that unction anymore. I don't feel the Ruach in me or the Numa, the Spirit in me. So does that mean that something is wrong with me? Does that mean that I'm no longer on the path that I should go? Does that mean that God has forgotten me and he's left me out here in this peril to die? No. Sometimes you get in a situation but you got to be filled up again. Amen. You don't believe me? Give me Acts chapter 4, verse 27. And these are the people commissioned with the Spirit in Acts chapter 2. And they had to ask to get refueled again. They had to make a pit stop. Because when they was on that road, a lot of things was happening to them. Keeping the name of the one who was killed, who they were representing. So they needed a token to continue to remind them of the journey and the path and the destination. Read that. Take us home with this. Verse 27 to 31. Verse 27. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, uh -huh. whom thou hast anointed, mm -hmm. both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together mm -hmm. for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined uh -huh. before to be done. Keep going. And now, Lord, uh -huh. behold their threatening. Wait, behold their what? Threatening. A lot of times we come under threats and danger and worry <clears throat> and issues and problems and situations as some people like to say <laughs> to become a threat but these are people who already have the spirit these are people who already walked with their master they walked with him Adonai which means master they walked with him they saw his miracles he died he resurrected he revealed himself to them he told them go into the upper room in Acts chapter 2 he said go into the Acts chapter 1 go into the upper room and wait 
for the comforter to come, the one that I told y'all about. Because remember, before that time, he already gave them the comforter. <laughs> so he gave them to them already and told them to wait for it again. Because when they got it, it said he opened up their understanding so they may understand the scriptures. <laughs> so he had to give them the spirit. They was in fear when he died. He had to tell them, listen, I'm back. But you know what? I, I can't stay, but I'm going to send you the comforter. Go and Acts chapter 2, wait for the comforter. Why did he stay with them for 40 days? See, when you start to understand the culture, you understand that when he was crucified, it was around Pesach or Passover, or I love bread, and 40 days later, 40 to 50 days later, is another, what we call Jewish festival, it's really an Israelite festival, called Feast Weeks. So that means the same people that put him to death 40 to 50 days prior were coming right back to the same place where they killed him. Look at that. When you study the culture, you understand what's going on. Just like today, you may see me have these Zitzits on, which is just a physical reminder to be obedient to the covenant of Yah, but if your heart's not circumcised, this ain't gonna remind you of nothing. I might as well use it as a fashion accessory, right? So keep reading that. Keep reading where you're going at. Keep going. And grant unto God. And grant unto your servant. That with all boldness. Uh-huh. But wait, so now they need boldness. Because if you read earlier, they was arrested, they were flogged. They were told, don't speak that name no more. We're gonna kill you. We're gonna arrest you. We're gonna persecute you. So now they have to pray. For what? Keep going. Uh, they may speak thy word mm -hmm. by stretching forth thine hand uh -huh. to heal. Uh -huh. And that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the, thy holy child, keep going. Jesus. Uh -huh. Keep going. And when they had prayed. Wait, and when they had prayed, what happened? The place was shaken. Whoa. You talking about like what happened in Acts chapter 2? You talking about like what happened prior when uh, Yahushua HaMashiach was crucified and the earthquake happened and spirits came up out of the ground? That's what you're telling me? Another shaking occurred? So sometimes when things are shaking, it's not to deter you. Sometimes the shaking is to remind you, you're about to be filled up again. But if you're not stirred up, it ain't gonna happen. You gotta welcome these things. Read it, read it. Go ahead, read it. Finish reading it. Where they were assembled together. Uh huh. Wait, so they came together, not by themselves. This is for somebody out there. Keep going. And they were all filled with. The they were all. Wait, I thought they had it already. <laughs> How you get filled and you're gonna get filled up again? Because life situations can deplete you Amen. of that. So sometimes you gotta go through it to understand that yeah, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. But I need more of this token of the coming because every time I possess this spirit and show fruits of it, I know that I'm going to make it into the kingdom. And they were filled again. And what? Uh, with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. And if you don't know how to do it and you need the spirit to speak for you, Romans 8 and 4 says the things that you can't say, right. that the Ruach or the Numa makes groanings on your behalf. Amen. So that paracletos, the one that was elected to be close to you, now is not only the token to remind you that Yah has his hand on you, but also to mediate for you Amen. in the event that you don't know how to speak to the Most High, that you have something that is elected to be close to you that's reminding you and also reminding Yah that you have been sealed, my child. He has not forgotten you. And never make anybody feel that you don't have the spirit simply because you got a situation. Mm -hmm. Tell them, I just need to be filled up again. Are you going to be the one to help me? Are you going to take me to the pit stop and put the fuel in me and change the tires? Are you willing to go through the process with me? Because a lot of times we only celebrate people when they get the prize. But we never did with them when they go through the process. Yes, sir. When is that going to change? So man, you're a male because your job is to remember. That's why he created you, to remember his covenant, his goodness, his mercy. Taste and see that he is good. Yeah. How many of you haven't had one of those dishes and you think about it all the time, like, man, I wish I had some sweet potato fries and some, some gravy and some, you think about that. That reminds you that at one time you tasted something that was good that satisfied your senses. So sometimes we may not in a while have tasted to see that God is good. But I tell you all the time, sometimes it's because you're next in line, and you're not celebrating the person who's ahead of you. Oh, you always try to jump the line, try to skip the line, try to throw shade on somebody else's celebration. Why not celebrate with them? Because that only proves what's in your heart, and that you're willing to help your brother and sister out. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to leave it off with this last statement. 
And then I'm out of here. Don't lose your keys. Put your keys somewhere where you can sit. And you won't lose it because these keys give you access. It's just a token of the thing that you possess. It's called right to possession in legal terms. But no matter how much access you have, no matter if you have the keys, if you're not obeying the word of the Most High, this don't mean nothing. The spiritual gifts don't mean nothing. How good you preach don't mean nothing. If you don't have that spirit and you're not producing the fruits of it to remind you of the covenant, it don't mean nothing. So don't always look to the woman because, you know, sometimes women remember everything. They remember doctor's appointments, birthdays. I know I forget some stuff. And I know my counterpart, she remembers the stuff. And I be feeling bad. I'm like, you know what, God, is there something that you gave me to remember that she may forget? <laughs> and I realize that as a male, my job is to remember God's covenant. Amen. But I don't trust to manhood until once I remember the goodness of God and I walk in obedience that I can begin to subdue every challenge, every adversity, every situation that he's placed in my path. When I have that enabling power to conquer it, now I have transitioned to manhood because I can speak it and watch it get done. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's it. I'm done. Oh, boy, how many scriptures was that? <laughs> that was awesome, man.